film shows the process and equipment designed and used at the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory in the preparation of plutonium metal. The isolated plutonium may then be used for metallurgical and pyrometallurgical research, for fuel alloy development, and for reactor and critical assembly elements. Because of the serious health hazards associated with handling plutonium, it is processed in airtight compartments in which the equipment is operated entirely by remote control. Here is the unit as it appears from the side opposite the control room. A flow sheet shows the steps used in this particular process to convert plutonium from a nitrate solution to elemental metal. The nitrate is transferred by vacuum from a stainless steel container into a precipitation vessel. Acid is added to rinse the system and to dilute the plutonium to the proper concentration. Hydrogen peroxide is introduced and precipitates solid plutonium peroxide. The peroxide slurry is transferred to a platinum-lined filter boat, which has a centered platinum filter disc in the bottom. The filtrate is pulled through the frit into a filtrate receiver where the residual hydrogen peroxide is continuously destroyed. Solid plutonium peroxide is left on top of the platinum filter. The boat is then transferred to a hydrofluorination furnace where the temperature is raised slowly to 600 degrees centigrade. Oxygen, anhydrous hydrogen fluoride, and sometimes argon are passed through the solid peroxide, converting it to plutonium tetrafluoride. The exit gases go to waste. The tetrafluoride is transferred from the boat to a mixing vessel. Elemental calcium and iodine are added and intimately mixed with the fluoride powder. This charge is then transferred to a magnesium oxide crucible contained in a steel pressure chamber. The chamber is next raised into an induction coil and heated to 425 degrees centigrade. At this temperature, the calcium and iodine react, causing the calcium to reduce the fluoride powder to metal. The contents of the vessel are dumped and the residue is separated from the plutonium metal button. Plutonium nitrate is carried to the unit in a stainless steel can. The solution has been previously sampled and analyzed for plutonium content and acidity. The container is placed in this nitrate unloading enclosure, which is maintained free of alpha contamination. A lift mechanism raises the can to a trap door where a dip tube transfers the contents of the can by vacuum into the precipitation vessel. The solution is thoroughly agitated to ensure uniformity of composition. Remote control panels manipulate all activities. The plutonium nitrate is diluted to the proper acidity and plutonium concentration. Hydrogen peroxide is added until a green plutonium precipitate is formed. A platinum-lined filter boat six inches in diameter and containing a quarter-inch centered platinum frit is introduced into the unit. The boat is carried on a conveyor to the filtration station where it is raised and sealed against the head to form an inline filter. Vacuum is used to pull the plutonium peroxide slurry through the frit. The filtrate passes through the centered disk to a filtrate receiver, and the solid plutonium peroxide remains in the boat. After the filtration is completed, the boat is transported to the hydrofluorination furnace. The furnace is a cylindrical chamber which is heated slowly to dry the plutonium peroxide cake. The temperature is then increased to 600 degrees centigrade and hydrogen fluoride and oxygen are introduced at the top of the furnace. These pass slowly through the peroxide into a waste disposal line. 
At the end of the cycle, the peroxide has been completely converted to plutonium tetrafluoride. The boat and the plutonium tetrafluoride are now conveyed to a dumping station. Here the boat is picked up and held by springs against an inverted funnel. The funnel and boat are turned over and sealed tightly against a plastic container called the mixer, and the fluoride is vibrated out of the boat. A steel pressure chamber is used to convert the plutonium tetrafluoride to plutonium metal. The chamber contains a magnesia crucible into which the charge will be loaded. The annular space between the crucible and chamber is filled with magnesia sand to protect against thermal shock. When loaded, the assembly is sealed with a metal lid. At this loading unit, an operator introduces crucibles into a storage turntable which will accommodate seven crucibles. Alloys of plutonium, such as iron and aluminum, are made by adding predetermined amounts of these elements into the crucible before loading. One crucible is always left in the valve as a contamination barrier. There is also on the turntable a receptacle for storing and a unit for removing used metal lids from the pressure chamber. When the crucibles have been loaded, the turntable is rotated from the control room and a pre-selected crucible is raised against the loading head and held there by vacuum. A pressure chamber is then raised around the crucible. Magnesia sand flows from a heated hopper into the annular space between crucible and pressure chamber. The assembly is then returned to the carriage and conveyed to the mixer. A plastic hopper is lowered against the mixer. Predetermined weights of calcium and iodine are introduced through a funnel into cups. These are moved into position above the hopper and emptied into the mixer. The mixer is rotated to achieve intimate contact between the particles of calcium and iodine with the plutonium tetrafluoride. The charge then flows by gravity into the crucible of the pressure chamber, where it is tamped by a vibrator. A gasket dispensing station places a metal gasket on top of the assembly. The unit is next conveyed to a reduction furnace. A hydraulic lift raises the pressure chamber into an induction coil heating element until the gasket seats on the head of the furnace. Pressure on the lift is increased to 7,000 pounds to ensure a gas-tight fit. The neutron counting rate from the pressure chamber is observed. The neutrons result from an alpha-N reaction on the fluorine. A high-frequency induction heater raises the temperature of the furnace to 425 degrees centigrade. The calcium and iodine then react to furnish sufficient heat for the calcium to reduce the tetrafluoride to metallic plutonium. A marked decrease in the neutron counting rate from the pressure vessel indicates the completion of this reaction. After an appropriate cooling period, the chamber is lowered into the carriage. At the crucible loading station, the gasket is removed and stored in a container for subsequent extraction. The contents of the pressure chamber are shattered by vibration, after which the chamber is raised to the dumper and locked in place. The dumper is inverted and sealed to the top rim of a chute. The vessel is then vibrated and the contents flow down to a turntable. The crucible fragments, magnesia sand and slag, are separated from the plutonium button. 
The turntable and brush are remotely manipulated to free the button from loosely adhering residue material. The residues are stored in a container for eventual removal. This is the plutonium button as it is pushed down a second chute into a plastic bag for transfer to fabrication facilities. Thank you.